Hey also, here's a uh, relative velocity problem and what you're looking at is a link that's rotating in the counterclockwise direction at a rate uh, of 6 radians per second. So angular velocity, 6 radians per second in the counterclockwise direction. And there's a, uh, a slot in this uh, linkage AB and point D is allowed to slide up and down in the slot as this thing rotates counterclockwise. So what this device actually does is it, it reduces the angular velocity of link AB in the counterclockwise direction. So we've got this, this rotation, 6 radians per second, and something uh, slower than AB. And what you're asked to do is determine the angular velocity and angular acceleration of AB at this point in time. And what you know is that there's uh, an angle of 60 degrees and 30 degrees for the two linkages. The way I recognize these kind of problems is I see a uh, stationary point and I see um, a connection between those two and the connection both it both rotates and the point at the end of it extends outward or or uh, for some problems it would extend inward as well so we see this combination of uh, rotational motion and radial motion or uh, an elongation or a shortening of this linkage in this case, the linkage is uh, elongating. The points, the distance between A and D is getting further, uh, further away over time. So once you recognize this kind of problem, I'd recommend uh, writing out the relative velocity equations, the relative or the velocity equation and the acceleration equation for rotating axes. So they're uh, long, uh, kind of complicated equations, and it's, it's a little bit difficult to interpret what each of these terms mean at first. So what helps me is to write out uh, three different columns. The first being the motion of a moving reference, the second one being the motion of this point D with respect uh, to the moving reference, and motion of D with respect to a stationary reference, which we'd call the actual motion of D. And I'll show you by example you know, exactly what I mean by these uh, three different terms. And what I've already done is established a stationary axis uh, represented by the capital letter X and Y. And right on top of it, I've established the rotational axis about point A and symbolized by little x and little y. So the motion of the moving reference, or this little x, little y coordinate system, the base of it, uh, point A, is not moving. Its velocity and acceleration are both zero. But this axis is rotating and it's rotating at the same velocity as um, the angular velocity of AB. So what I've written, the angular velocity of this uh, rotating axis is symbolized by a capital letter, the vector capital letter omega. And this vector only operates or it only acts in the k-hat direction, so into or out of the screen. And as well, we've got the rotational speed and the rotational acceleration, which is omega dot. Uh, again in the k-hat direction and I use the scalar quantity alpha AB to represent the magnitude of this rotation or the magnitude of this uh, angular velocity. So the next column, the motion of D with respect to the moving axis is characterized by a few different terms. The first is the position of D relative to A. And the position of D relative to A acts only in the i-hat direction or only in the x direction. So it's, uh, the distance between D and A is 4 feet. So we've got 4 feet in the i-hat direction. And the velocity in the acceleration of D with respect to A, these are the relative velocity and acceleration uh, with respect or relative to the rotating axes. And even though we look at it, and you look at it and you say, well, D is, you know, it's rotating in this direction. You know, you look at it and you say, well, there's got to be some component in the Y or in, the hor or in this direction and in the X direction. But we're, remember, we're talking about uh, velocities with respect to this moving axis. And this axis uh, is rotating with point D, and the uh, only component or the only direction is in the I hat direction or the X direction. So what we've got, the relative velocity of D with respect to A is only acting i-hat direction. I use this term as a scalar, the relative velocity and the x, y, z to symbolize the uh, rotating axes. And the same is true with the acceleration, the relative acceleration. It, it also only acts in the i-hat direction for the rotating coordinate system. So what I'm doing with these three columns, it, it helps me to organize my thoughts. Um, so I'm trying to figure out different terms to plug into these two equations. So for example, I know the velocity of A is equal to zero, acceleration of A equal to zero, 
and I don't know omega, capital letter, this vector omega, but I do know it acts only in the k-hat direction. And we need to figure out, or we do know, the position of d relative to a. And we know that the velocity of d with respect to a in the moving coordinate system acts only in the i-hat direction. So the third thing we need to figure out is the velocity of d with respect to a stationary reference. So this is the actual motion of point d. So if I do, uh, zoom in on the device, uh, here's the geometry that we need to do to figure out. We want to figure out the position of D relative to C, and that's symbolized by this vector right here. So we need to figure out the X and uh, the Y components of this vector. So to figure this out, I know that the linkage AB is displaced 30 degrees from the vertical. So I've got the, this angle here is 30 degrees, and I know the full angle, the displacement of uh, CD is rotated 60 degrees from the vertical axis. So the difference between these 60 degrees minus 30 degrees is 30 degrees within this triangle. So the trigonometry, uh, we go negative 2 feet sine 30 in the j-hat direction, or negative 2 feet in the y direction, and 2 feet cosine theta in the x direction. So symbolized by this uh, length of the right triangle. So the movement of CD is simply rotation about a fixed axis C. So I know the velocity of D is equal to the angular velocity, omega CD, which is given to us. It's 6 radians per second. And now we know the position of D relative to C uh, in the I and J hat direction. So the cross product between these two will give us the velocity, the actual velocity of D in this direction in the X and Y coordinates. Or I'm sorry, in this direction since it's rotating counterclockwise. So I work through the math, the cross product between these two, and what I come up with for a velocity of d is 6 feet per second in the i-hat direction and about 10.4 feet per second in the j-hat direction. And I can do the exact same thing for the acceleration of point D. I know the acceleration CD, it's provided to us. We now know the position of D relative to C. And we know the angular velocity of it. So working through the math on this, I come up with a value of almost, six, of almost 60 feet per second squared in the i-hat direction and a little over 40 feet per second squared in the j-hat direction for the acceleration of point D. So we now know the velocity of point D, the actual velocity of it. And what we're left with, or where I'm going with this, is we need to figure out the angular velocity. It's asking us for this problem so we can calculate. We want to calculate omega AB. And we'll, we'll, uh, we've got another unknown, and that's the velocity, the relative velocity of x, y, and z. So we've got two equations and two unknowns. So we'll uh, break it into the i and j hat components and solve for both of these. And we can come up with the first part of the problem, which is omega AB. So here it is written out for you. The velocity of d is equal to the velocity of a, which is 0, uh, plus uh, the rotational vector of this moving axis. We've got the scalar omega ab and the uh, cross product of these two. So the position of d relative to a is 4 feet in the i-hat direction. And we've got the relative velocity uh, acting only in the i-hat direction. So evaluating this cross product, what I come up with is simply 4 times omega AB in the j-hat direction. Cross product between I, uh, k and i directions would leave us with the j-hat direction. And then I just moved everything down to expand that. And I equate the i-hat direction with, so I can come up with the relative velocity is 6 feet per second. And in the j-hat direction, I've got these terms, about 10.4 is equal to 4 omega AB. And solve for omega AB, and I've got 2.6 radians per second. So I won't do it in this screencast, but you can do the exact same thing. You, we've got, we now know the acceleration of d. We know omega dot, or I'm sorry, we don't know it, but we know it's a scalar in the k-hat direction, so we want to figure out alpha a, b for the second part of the problem. But we now know uh, omega, and we know the velocity of d with respect to a in this rotating coordinate frame. But what we don't know, again, is the relative velocity of A in the X, Y, and Z. But what you'll do, evaluate these uh, multiple cross products. And in the I and J hat directions, we've got two unknowns. But we've got two equations and two unknowns. You can solve for alpha AB, the second part uh, of this question.